Santos, your host. I'm a founding director of Awakenings Institute, a nonprofit organization devoted to creating a more loving world. And I'm delighted today to be joined by my husband, Dr. Philip Montrose, who is also a founding director of Awakenings Institute, a published author and experienced trainer in holistic life coaching and healing. So with that, our topic today actually is one of our favorites, um, the loving power of your soul, which takes us back more than 30 years <laughs> to the time when we first connected with the soul's loving guidance and wisdom. So before we begin, I want to just mention that everyone is welcome in the circle. And if you can, whether you're with us live or joining during the week, please tell us in the comments where you're from and add your insights. We appreciate that. As we begin, I also want to invite in the beings of light who surround us so lovingly in the higher realms to support us and bless our circle with divine love and light as we open to the love we hold in our hearts and souls and take this love and light into the depths of our being. Also opening to the, the truth within ourselves and opening to that spiritual presence to bring that to the circle. So Philip, would you like to add anything to that blessing? No, this is a time to be where you are and enjoy your life and, and spread the light out to you and to those you love and to the, to the world. Right, yeah. So I want to ask you then, Philip, if you can start with sharing a bit about your experience with the loving power of your heart and soul over the past three decades and how that has changed your life. Yes, well, it's something where our soul is, of course, born with the soul. Our soul really is the uh, impetus to, to incarnate into a physical body the way I understand it. I think Jane does too, and probably many of you. So what we are experiencing, which seems like everything is really the result, uh, the, uh, the impetus, the exploration of, uh, of uh, our soul. And, and that's what it became more and more evident as, we, as I shared doing the soul centering and connecting to this deeper place. It's sort of like that app in the background that's always running. And, but when you connect to it, it, you realize it's really the greater you, the greater wisdom and, and uh, as we'll explain today or share a little bit, uh, as you find ways to really directly and verifiably connect consciously with your soul, then everything changes. You feel uh, connected, you feel loved, you feel directed. Right. It really can change your perspective on yourself, which I think is so important. I know there was a time in my life when I didn't really feel like I mattered. I didn't feel like anything I could possibly do would matter. I was an architect then. I was I was successful. <laughs> you know, Philip was a successful educator. We we had pretty much all the trappings of a of a good life, a house, dogs. We don't have children. <laughs> we had dogs, cars, we had vacations, everything was looking good, but inside it wasn't. And I think it might have been more poignant for me because. I really felt like the life force was being drained out of me. And at the time, we were really seeking to find guidance within ourselves. Uh, we had been, actually, we met in a spiritual organization years before that even. And it was one where the, the leader had all the truth and everybody was supposed to just follow that truth as if we didn't know anything. And we, we went along with that for years. And then finally it occurred to us, well, if this leader has all this divine truth, why can't we have it? <laughs> right. And it led us on another search. So, and that's when we found this wonderful process, which you're going to share today uh, for accessing the wisdom, your own divine wisdom, and to make that the foundation of your life rather than what other people are telling you life should be for you. And until that happens, it's, it, it can be challenging because we don't quite know <laughs> what we believe ourselves, but we know that something is not right with what we're being told. Right. So um, I think in terms of benefits, uh, when I first learned the process that we're going to share today, as I mentioned, I was not in a very good place. And 
I remember waking up in the morning and and thinking, well, gosh, you know, <laughs> I just don't want to get up again. Um, but the minute I started doing this this process, this and it's fairly simple to do in the morning. I think I started getting up 15 minutes earlier to do this soul centering process. And then almost immediately, a, a light <laughs> kind of went on for me. And I started to feel like I couldn't wait to get up in the morning because life was so exciting for me. Well, something obviously changed. And it was really, and it is in the heart. You know, when, when we say, I feel, you know, I really feel this truth in my heart, we know, in a sense, we understand that that's true, but we don't consciously have an awareness of it, and we don't have an awareness of how to really build strength in the heart to have that access. Right. Yeah, it's something that even though we innately know we need to be remembering it when we were in that Gurdjieff Ospensky school where the leader had all the power seemingly. Um, part of what they taught, which was, was very valuable, which we still use is this remembering, like remembering who you are. Part of earthly experience is forgetting, forgetting who you are. <laughs> right. And that's why that term waking up is, is so uh, powerful and sparks a lot of awareness. Right. So when we are more aware, we remember who we are. We're something deeper than just having a physical experience, even though some of us maybe never get to that point until you go to the other side and you realize, oh, <laughs> I guess there's a veil. There's a, an intentional separation for, for various reasons. Uh, but nonetheless, we still want to be directed by the soul and, and to, to make the most for why we're here. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And as I mentioned, it, it changed everything for me almost immediately. And one of the reasons is because if you start to connect in with the truth in your heart, you're going to start hear, hearing a different story about yourself from a soulful perspective about how you really are a wonderful spiritual being. Mm -hmm. You're special. You have unique gifts. You have a reason for being here. And your heart knows what that is to the degree that <laughs> that you're preparing for it, too, because it is purpose. Life purpose is a journey, of course. And it's not like for us when we started. And that was more than 30 years ago. Now, when we made this connection, we didn't know everything that was going to happen. We didn't know that we were going to be studying coaching and healing and getting really into depth with spiritual healing, particularly, and then starting Awakening Institute and uh, having that mission of making a difference in the world. And we had no idea, but we knew that what was lighting us up, <laughs> you know, light up your life. It is the things that make you feel most alive, really, that are for you. And I think for the circle, for each of us, what we want to do during this time when we're together and then during the week also is have so much of that light in our hearts, <laughs> so much love that it's overflowing just naturally. And then we become a blessing, more and more of a blessing to the world. Each of us is a blessing to the world <laughs> already. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when we have light, you know, we want those little sparks of light all over the world that is going to light the world up mm -hmm. yeah and that light in our heart can can light up ourselves and our life in the world and there is a lot of darkness to light up but you know as the same <laughs> right. goes, goes a little a candle can lighten up a very broad big distance one little candle and and so too with the spark of our soul and being aware and and at times we do forget and we do go into the darker places and there is a lot of healing here and that's one of the reasons why we're here to heal there's not a kind of a deadline on them, this but there's something we want to do if we can remember to do it right well and i think we all reach a point where going with the status quo is no longer an option, which happened to us. And it happens to each of us uniquely in different ways. But what it is then really is we're starting that 
that soul's journey, you know, really that's where the spiritual path begins. And it takes us out into the wilderness. It takes us out into places <laughs> we've never gone before. Right. So then from there on, it's all new. In, uh, in India and Eastern traditions, they have these stages where after you kind of grow up and then you, you get, have a livelihood and live in the world, you have the last stage of your life is sort of a spiritual retreat. In the West, we, have, uh, we grow up and we have young adulthood. And then there's that transition, that, that fourth stage, that sometimes midlife crisis or transition mm -hmm. where we can wake up or regress, try to just recapture our youth and realize there is something there that we can go deeper or try to uh, default, uh, try to avoid that. But if we do open our hearts, wonderful things can happen. As, as Jane was saying, the path narrows. And at a certain point, um, what you're doing, I, I was a school teacher, it was somewhat fulfilling, but I knew if I, if I kept doing that, I would kind of die with my music inside of me, as, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it wasn't going to be fulfilling. And, and, and that's, I think, true for a lot of people. You can get by or be very comfortable uh, and, and even be productive and somewhat happy, but you know you're missing somewhat stuff. Happy. <laughs> but you're kind of missing something. You know that you, know, you could have done more, you could have done your best, and, and you could have found out more, and you settled. Uh, there's a set point, a settling point, where you didn't, you didn't go for all you could, you know, you didn't make the most of it. And, and that's what that soul's journey of the soul will beckon you to do it. And when you counsel and co-create with the soul, a wonderful heart opening and melding begins. And you can just continually rely on that even when you get into dark places, which still will occur and you lose your way for a while and then find it and know that you have the light of your soul to uh, lead you in to co-create with. Right. Well, and, and it seems it's part of the journey when we go out into the wilderness, we're exploring a new possibility for us in our external world, and we're feeling more empowered. Um, and then at the same time, that makes us wonder, well, if I'm not this person back in the status quo in the herd of humanity, <laughs> then who am I? Right. And that that leads us to that really deep searching, which some people even call the dark night of the soul because we can go into those really deep places and we lose sight of what the truth is for us of who we are. It's like, okay, I'm not this. And then I'm hearing <laughs> this message inside of me is telling me I'm a wonderful spiritual being, but I don't, don't quite believe it yet. And that's because we have, we're holding on to old beliefs and old um, kind of programs that we've received all of our lives that we need to work through to, right. to come out to the place where we, we fully embrace ourselves and love ourselves. Right. And there's no reason. I mean, <laughs> wherever you are, you can love yourself today. And being in a, an environment like this with more loving people, it's a good way to foster that within ourselves where we can, we can understand, yes, I, I am. I am a soul. I have a soul and I can access my soul. And the soul is that piece of God, that piece of unity and source awareness that flows through all of us. And that's why we're all connected. We're all pieces of God, children mm -hmm. of God, oneness. Uh, let me read a, a, a little brief quote from one of our students who learned the soul centering, like we're going to go through today, one of our versions of soul centering. Uh, and by doing it regularly, here's how it transformed her life. She said, the loving power of my soul affects everything I do as, as a mother and at work and end of life care. She does end of life palliative care is her job. The more I practice uh, connecting with my soul, the more benefits I receive, especially in challenging times. I elevate my perspective in situations that could otherwise be very difficult. In other words, there would be a lot of suffering without the guidance of the soul. The soul can show the blessings in life. It brings peace and joy to every aspect of life. Mm, yeah, yeah, and it's so true. Uh, one of the things we do in, with Awakenings Institute, we, because we both started kind of <laughs> on this journey as healers um, and then coaching 
and healers uh, because they they form a whole. <laughs> the, the healing is great for clearing what's inside, but then you need to bring it into your reality. So we include the coaching. Mm-hmm. And in, on that journey, uh, first for ourselves and then working with students for all of these years, uh, we've learned a lot. And we've also learned the profound power of healing from the soul's energy of spiritual healing as really the deepest level of healing. If you look at physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, spiritual healing is the deepest level and most complete healing, which can I mean, miracle, <laughs> miracles have happened mm-hmm. with people not being able to walk and then they can walk and uh, having all kinds of injuries that go away, just all kinds of things. And I mentioned physical things just because they're so dense <laughs> and it creates mm-hmm. credibility. But it also, as I mentioned, changes completely changes your sense of who you are and opens it opens all of us to a much larger truth. And also to the, the those vast realms of spirit where we have angels and guides watching over us that we can connect with and really feel feel their presence in our hearts. And you may be there. Some, you know, some of us are and some of us are just starting. Some of us may be just wondering. And wherever you are, it's it's perfect. That's the perfect place for you now. Right. And so our soul has a plan for us. Yes, there is a plan, although we may (laughs) not remember it or quite consciously be aware of it. Uh, And the soul plan seems to be uh, involved with three general areas, which are learning, growing, and loving. So we're here to learn. So that's why some things can be very interesting. And we're often excited by learning new things, right? And growing, and we need to grow through not only learning, but sometimes challenging, difficult situations, suffering, struggling. Uh, why are these difficult situations there uh, to grow, to learn? And, and through it all is love, opening our heart and loving and, and spreading that into sometimes difficult cir- circumstances, sometimes very exciting, creative, in-the-flow experiences. Right. And and when, when we started out, I was just looking at, for some of these notes on heart math. I don't seem to have them right here. Um, When we started out, it was just really our validation of what we were experiencing through the experiences. And now um, over the years, really starting around the time when when we were starting out doing this work, uh, science is, is evolving and catching up with us in terms of how the heart is perceived, how the right. heart is perceived, how the experience of happiness, which resonates with love <laughs> and mm. the heart energy, happiness, gratitude, you know, all of those wonderful things, magic, miracles, um, those, all of those things are life affirming and you can feel it because you feel more alive. I mean, focus for a minute on being afraid, like wallowing around in the mud. We've all been there afraid distressed, frustrated, confused. And just even talking about, I can just feel my energy. <laughs> it's like, boom, <laughs> you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's going down. And then I, if I, if I change my focus and imagine rising up a little bit, breathing in love, which we can do anytime, love and light, peace, joy, gratitude gratitude is a great thing because you can be grateful to have a pen and it'll lift your spirits you know it it doesn't take much but as i mentioned science is starting to validate all of these things um stress for example is, is known to be associated with just about every disease imaginable and it can even be a killer Whereas happiness is like as i mentioned um and philip might do you have any statistics on happiness right there with you i well i i not so much statistics but just going back to heart math and some of its discoveries which is on the forefront of science merging with spirituality uh one of the things heart math institute does is measure the heart rate variability which is the physical uh rhythms of the heart and perhaps 
counterintuitively, if you have a greater variability in your heart rhythms, which is continuously changing from moment to moment, that's good. That gives you more capacity, more creativity, more resilience. And if you have a more of a flat line, more of a small uh, heart rate variability, that's a sign of stress, especially chronic stress shutting down your life force mm -hmm. uh, and chronic depression. And they have associated that with a disease and illness and even longevity or lack of longevity if you have a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, the goal, again, is, is heart math and other sciences, cutting edge science says, is to be more in the flow by your lifestyle, by sleep, sunlight, diet, exercise, those things. But the relaxation response, as it was called, is really generated by the soul and the soulful qualities that we're talking about here. And that that brings out um, uh, love and courage and compassion and trust. And these soulful qualities are generated when you're in this quiet, calm place. Even when you're, you're stressed, you find a way to respond instead of react. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And in heart math, uh, I don't have the exact statistics or anything with me right now, but, but I know that they talk about can, when you're connecting with love, the love in your heart, and it brings, it brings all of the organs in your body into a, a different state of, I can't remember what the word is. It's like continuity or harmony. Coherence. Coherence <laughs> of coherence that is supportive of life and also life affirming and, and even they associate it with longevity. And so it, it's like it makes you younger, <laughs> whereas if you're in that other place, as Philip mm -hmm. was suggesting, also with stress, it is it reduces life, <laughs> life expectancy. Mm -hmm. And you and of course, it's more pleasant. You know, being in that kind of loving, mm -hmm. gentle. I, one of my favorite phrases is being in the flow with joy and ease and love mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. living in that space. Yeah. Another way of saying that is being open or contracted. If you're open, you can, can explore and deal with things. If you're contracted, you're in this shutdown place. And, and there may be times where you have to protect yourself too. There is, it, this is an all or nothing, but just generally speaking, living your life from a more open, exploratory, creative place rather than a very contracted, fearful, uh, avoidant place. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can feel it for yourself. You can see it in science. <laughs> you know, there, there are a lot of ways of validating it. And then, of course, just spiritually taking a broader look at the whole picture. Just, and, and I, I can actually, I think I'll just read Awakening's Dream now. And it just makes so much sense. Love makes so much sense. It makes sense for us personally. It makes sense for us collectively. Um, we, this dream came to us in the mid nineties and it has been kind of our inspiration for Awakenings Institute since that time. Imagine a world where love is the guiding force, where the unique gifts that each individual brings receive honor and respect, where all are nurtured in allowing their gifts to blossom, to manifest the joy of living in each moment. Imagine a world where all of nature is also honored, so all may live in harmony and share an increasingly vibrant and beautiful environment. What we imagine we can create starting in this moment, this vibrant world will come into being as each of us empowers ourselves to live the dream now and share it with others, playing a part in the creation of this dream as the mission of Awakenings Institute. And you can just recognize if you imagine that world, which we can all do now and we'll visualize it in a while too. In this dream, there is no poverty because everyone is nurtured and loved. Their animals are all taken care of. The environment is, is honored and nurtured. Everything is honored and nurtured. You know, we, we also, from that loving place, we sense a closer connection with the divine. We have that experience of oneness, you know, as you have going out in nature or 
we have one process we do imagining yourself on this mountaintop with the light of source sh shining down on you. And you know, you see yourself completely differently there than wallowing in the mud, like I <laughs> just mentioned. It's a whole different experience. Right. I put a link, by the way, to Awakening's dream about where everyone's nurtured and honored that Jane just read, uh, which was the inspiration for our nonprofit organization, Awakenings Institute, which brings you the circle of love and light every week here on Facebook. And I'm Philip Montrose and Jane Montrose, in case you're tuning in late. And you can find that at our website at gettingthrough.org, gettingthru.org slash awakenings, gettingthrough.org slash awakenings. Yeah, yeah. And it, that, it inspires us as much now as it ever has. And now with the circle, I see all of us, all of the beautiful beings who are here. And, and I have to admit, I can't, <laughs> I can't see the comments because I've been um, banned from Facebook. But um, I'm still here. And, <laughs> and I see us all, all over the world. And over the years, we've had students in our courses on, in every continent. <laughs> One of the delightful things about being alive at this time and just these sparks of light all over the world. And it's not just us, obviously. It's so many organizations like this who are joining to create a more loving world where each of us is a spark of light. And when there are enough of us and the lights become bright enough, just imagine the whole world will be lit up. So that's, that's where we're going with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So I could, um, did you have anything more you wanted to add about the soul centering before I do a demonstration no. of it? No, I think this would be a good time for that. Okay. So this is a guided visualization. If you happen to be driving or <laughs> in an activity where it's not conducive to closing your eyes, uh, you can just uh, listen for now and please stay uh, alert. <laughs> Otherwise you can, Take this opportunity to close your eyes. Just closing your eyes and focusing on your breath is a wonderful way to change your state. And we, we've done something we call the 60 second <laughs> meditation, which is just closing your eyes and breathing in a little love and light. And we can just imagine inviting that love and light from everywhere in the universe, from each other, from all the sources that are available to us, taking it in and sending it to every part of the body and then releasing on the out breath. So as you breathe in, you bring in more life, more love, more light. And as you exhale, you're releasing anything that isn't that, that you're ready to let go of right now. And you can just imagine any of those things, whatever they are, floating down through your body into the earth where they can be neutralized and turned back into light, which then rises up into the universe and becomes available to us as light and love. So just breathing in that light, that love to all of the cells of your body. And you can notice, you might notice most of us hold a little tension probably around our necks and shoulders and you can just send that light and love there, loving energy. You can also send it into your mind, into your brain, which is, we all know how there's often a discussion going on internally and just allow this love and light to relax the mind asking that active part of the brain to just let go for now so you can be more present in your body. And it can come back after we're done, come, can come back and evaluate the experience and that's good because what we want is to be able to validate these kinds of experiences. So I often imagine it's like they're little bubbles <laughs> of thoughts that are floating away so my mind can just be still. You might notice you feel more present in your body now 
than when we started. Another powerful thing to do is to draw on our intent, which is a very powerful force too. We're, we're not always aware of it, but with your intent, you can just ask any energy that is not, a, not your own to leave your space. So we are a body and we're en energetic beings with a ball of light that surround us. And you can just ask any energy that's not your own in that ball of light to go back, send it lovingly where it came from. And that might create more space for you to feel like you're yourself. And the other factor then is that we leave bits of ourselves in other time and places, times and places. And you can just ask all of those parts of yourself to come back to you now. And you might, I can feel it when I ask that. I can just feel the energy coming back. So there's more of me here to be present in this moment. And just breathe in that sense of presence and peace and more love. And then opening to the truth in your heart and, uh, and lighting up your heart with love. So sending more of that loving light into your heart and allowing it to awaken <laughs> that love that is there. So you might sense it as you breathe light in. You might sense it as a light that becomes brighter as you breathe more love into it. Or if you're more kinesthetic, you might sense it as a feeling that becomes stronger in your heart. And you can just feel that love coming out and wanting to expand outward and just allow it to to radiate out from your heart as it, as it blooms there <laughs> and radiating out all through your body and all around you, filling that whole space that is your energy field with the heart's love. And sometimes I like to imagine a little heart in every cell of my body Every cell wants to be nurtured. Every cell has an intelligence and an awareness of life. So when you breathe love into every cell, you'll, you might notice this tingling, very lively sensation in that area all through your body. Also breathing that love and light out from, from the center of your being, which is in your heart, that center from your heart center, as some people say, you can allow that energy around you to expand out. We contract ourselves a lot to fit in <laughs> kind of because sometimes because there isn't much space for us and just also psychologically to fit in and spiritually to fit in. This is your time and your space just to be yourself. So you can just expand out as much as you want. And technically there is no boundary between us and all that is. We're all part of the oneness and you might experience that. There is also a light above you. I suggested that when I was talking about the mountaintop and you can imagine yourself on a mountaintop <laughs> can imagine all of us together in the circle, in the circle on a mountaintop. And the sun is shining down on us, the sun, our source of energy on our planet. And also it is, it signifies our source, our true source, the creator above us. And just ask that light to send down an even higher frequency of energy now. You can feel it coming down over your body and allow it to enter through the top of your head and flow down through the insides of your body too. Down your head and neck and shoulders, down your arms to the tips of your fingers, through all the organs of your body, just filling those with this even higher frequency of life-affirming light, <laughs> really. 
going all the way down to your hips and legs to the tips of your toes. And again, overflowing and filling that whole space of light around you that is you. And from this space, just notice how you feel about yourself now. Notice how you feel about the possibility of a more loving world. You can also ask for a message. Maybe there's a message for you from this space. It's really a state, a soulful state where you can receive soulful guidance. Maybe there's a message for you now. These messages can be so simple, but profound that, that we might think, well, that's just too simple. And I think it's worth thinking again about it. Because the message might be something like you are love. And that's truth. It's a very profound truth. And if you can believe that and really take it in, it can change your world. Philip, would you like to add anything? Any guidance you're receiving? Any perceptions? Well, one is similar to what you said about all is love or opening to love and all is being healed too, which is interesting at its own rate, its own awareness and things will be ultimately healed in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And if you take a situation and surround it, surround it with love, amazing things can happen. Or take a fear and surround it with love. Mm -hmm. Might dissolve. And of course, the guidance just about who you are and how worthy you are and how actually important you are. Each of us matters. A lot of times we don't realize or think about that because we might even have people who, who are telling us we don't matter or that there's something wrong with us or we're not doing something right or whatever it is. From this place can recognize the truth. And you can see if we're here to create a more loving world, and you can send out that love to your community, to those you love, just filling your whole home and space around all the space <laughs> in your whatever kind of region you have, if it's an apartment or a home with a yard or a place with more acreage or whatever it is, you can fill the whole space with love. And then you can imagine that light if you look down on the earth, all of those lights that are filled with love. And you do matter. What if, what if everybody said, I don't matter, so why bother? And you imagine the world now and all the lights go out. <laughs> Sounds kind of sad. <laughs> and it's not where we're going. We're going more towards the center of our being. And as Philip, you mentioned that we come with a plan. Do you want to talk a little more about that? Right. It, it, if you take a step back and wonder why things are going the way they do or why you're motivated by certain things, um, the idea of a soul's plan, which you may or may not have encountered before, makes a lot of sense. If you believe there's a purpose and we're here for a reason, who, who generated the reason? Who, who prompted the reason? Where did that come from? Uh, you know, it, 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 we're like planted here as seeds, which we can grow if we nurture ourselves and follow our hearts or not. We kind of die on the vine on this lifetime, but we're, we're planted and given sort of instructions by our souls and higher guides before we're born. Um, 
and that's why people have near-death experiences see these subliminal uh, uh, sublime uh, experiences and wonderful connectedness and connecting with guides and wisdom um, and that there's a reason they're here and often sent back to life to fulfill it and then life has a meaning and transcends death well we don't have to have a near-death experience to realize that we're here for a meaning and a purpose and following our hearts is is the is the inner compass uh, and that helps us fulfill our soul's plan of, as I said, learning, growing, and loving. So by the time you end this, this lifely incarnation, this life's incarnation, you look back and you say, you know, you, you had a very satisfying, fulfilling life. Um, and you, you, you did do your best and, and made the good choices. Mm -hmm. Right. That brings up another part of it that is fascinating for me. I've always been very interested in spiritual growth. And, and the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to grow really fast, you know, <laughs> as fast as I possibly could. And uh, I think that we, we are on, you could say a trajectory and the trajectory can be, it can be kind of flat. <laughs> so a lot of people are kind of flatlined. <laughs> it can be kind of flat. And it, and it might actually be going upward a little bit, you know, where we're growing some. And if we connect most fully with the truth within our hearts, we can put ourselves on the, the greatest <laughs> trajectory moving upward uh, towards really towards our own in our own evolution. And also, as Philip suggested, towards realizing our purpose, the reason that we actually are here in this life, which may be partly connected with the circle of generating love and light and, and radiating that out into the world. And there may be, and there are probably is for just about all of us, something else. We, we have our, uh, our practice, we, we're trainers in holistic coaching and healing. We are. We write books. We we do a lot of different things, um, and this is the circle of love and light is meaningful to us because of awakening stream. Because the whole reason behind all of those other things is because we're here to create a more loving world, and we feel like we're on our highest trajectory. In other words, for our own soul's growth. And for making a difference on the planet when we're when that's what we're doing. Right. So each of us, each of us can <clears throat> take our own measurement of that for ourselves. You know, sometimes we have a choice. Well, do I want to just kind of flatline and stay where I am? You know, like this is safe <laughs> and it's secure and it's OK and I can get my retirement and um, I guess and then go on vacation after I retire and whatever, or I can, you know, maybe there's something else that within my heart is calling to me. Yeah. So for and those that's... people who are looking or want that more, you know, this is this program, this show is encouragement and nurturance and resources for you. Right. Right. And there are times uh, we share, we also talk more specifically about healing. We, we have, a, we have other co-hosts, uh, Phoenix, on Facebook, a wonderful, wonderful co-host and person you could connect with, uh, P-H-E-O-N-I-X-X. -X. <laughs> and another one of the co-hosts is Lula Mora, mm -hmm. L-O-O-L-A-M-O-R-A -O -O -A on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And of course, Philip on, and I have been banned. I'm, <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah, but, I'm fairly, um, by the way, without right. going yeah. into that story. Right. It's one of those things. <laughs> we, all, we all have challenges we face, too. And I think it's helpful if we can understand the challenges as part of mm -hmm. our growth too. So right, it's transformation. Right, right. Anyhow, um, I think I would also still like to do the part, <laughs> and we do this every every week. We have a discussion, um, and hopefully, offering something, some insights that will help you that you can use to bring more love and light into your life. Um, we have the discussion and then we do some kind of a guided visualization process as we did here with the soul centering. Um, and then we, we send that love and light out into the world in different ways. And I think we suggested that already 
But I'd like to follow up on that a little more on ways that that we can easily do it. And one of the really powerful things you can do is access really the power of your beliefs. Like I believe we can create this loving world. I can see this loving world coming into being. And just visualize that, that world surrounded with love and for the lights to be coming so numerous and so bright that the whole world is lit up with light. And that completely absorbs all the rest that is there. You can also, we had actually a, a few weeks ago, um, Gerald Ann Heatherdale, she's another, another really wonderful, wonderful person uh, to connect with. Uh, Peterson, I think it's Gerald Ann, J-E-R-Y-L-A-N-N, uh, Peterson Heatherdale on Facebook. Uh, she did a talk on the healing power of water. And if you recognize that, if you imagine sending love into water, then it goes out, there's more water than earth, <laughs> than land on the earth, just visualizing it going through the waters and sending love all through the world in that way. And of course, then we drink it, can send, you can send love to your own water. <laughs> Another thing, actually, another thing Gerald Ann suggested, and I got one for myself. Um, I got this on Amazon. It's a little globe. Actually, I came in a pack of six. You can get a whole pack of six. <laughs> I think Philip has one too now because I gave him one. And you can just surround the world with love yeah. in your hands and just visualize it. And again, visualize what that is, what that means, a world that is really guided by love, where people love, love so much that it heals the world. Got the whole world in my hands. <laughs> That's true. I do, too. So beautiful. Any other thoughts on that, Philip? On, on what? On sending ways to send love out? I think just look at your life every day as, as an expression of love and, and soul and how you can make the most of each day. If you figure each day is sort of like a lifetime you, and you start over each day. So you, in case you have a bad day, which once in a while we do, you know, how can I make this a good day? You know, how can I start well? How can I keep going well? How can I finish well? And, and that's very loving and very soulful way I think of living your life mm -hmm. <clears throat> now doing something nice for somebody mm -hmm. you know if you're out shopping or in an office or whatever send love to the people around you you know say nice things compliment people in a sincere way it's interesting if you look for something good there's good in everyone and the more we recognize the good in others, the more we recognize it in ourselves. So that just makes sense too. And I, I just think I enjoy that. It's sometimes it's so simple. Like you notice someone, it can be an easy, a, a little thing like, oh, gee, those are beautiful shoes you have on. You know, and the person looks at you and said, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, like, that's amazing. Someone said something nice to me. <laughs> and we can do that. I mean, that's how we become, I would say, kind of do, we're like ambassadors of love to the world. Mm -hmm. Another thing I like to say to people is uh, what's been the highlight of your day, which seems to pop them out of their routines. And oftentimes they say, I haven't had a highlight. Uh, and, I, and I just say, well, okay, well, just, you know, look for one, one's coming. <laughs> right, right. And it is um, just to, I, I actually, I, I forgot, I wanted to mention uh, Bob Proctor, who's often a pretty well-known success coach. Um, he told a story one time about a person who was a waiter. And as an experiment, 
he decided when he approached a table just to think loving thoughts toward all the people at the table. So he did that. And then he noticed over time when he did that, his tips went up. And as I say that because it's, it's just an indicator that it makes a difference to people. I, I used to think, why compliment people? They'll never care what I think anyhow, which is really <laughs> not thinking much of myself, obviously. And also not thinking much of how much it means to people for you to care. So there's, there's so much we can do. And um, before we close, did you have any other, anything else you wanted to mention, Philip? No, we, I, I don't know if we wanted to mention our upcoming book, if this was the time to do it or. Well, I think, yeah, we can do that. And one thing I wanted to make sure we don't forget is to uh, talk about how they can get uh, access to the soul centering process because we have it right on our website. Yeah, and, and I put it a link in, in the common area and the, and the shortened link is uh, tinyurl.com slash soul dash center, tinyurl.com slash soul dash center. And that will take you to an article and description and some more ma material on the soul centering that Jane did earlier. Right, right. And that's, we, we use tiny URLs a lot because we have a huge website. So that's another thing. If you want to go there, you can poke mm -hmm. around. There are a lot of free things there. Um, different topics, a lot of blogs and articles. <laughs> it has different sections to it. So uh, one's on coaching and healing. We have one on EFT, the emotional freedom techniques. We have one that's just spiritual, we have one on life coaching, and then one on awakenings that Philip mentioned, gettingthrough.org mm -hmm. forward slash awakenings. And that's mm -hmm. getting thru.org forward slash awakenings. Um, and oh, you want to talk about the book? And yeah. we did, we're just, uh, we have a book. We just finished it actually, and it's being printed right now. Yeah, let me see if I can get the cover here, the show, the beautiful cover that. Jane Desire, The Loving Power of the Soul. It's coming out January uh, 2022, 20, uh, the beginning of next year, very soon. Uh, a guidebook for realizing your true potential. And that's been a very long work encapsulating a lot of our 25 year, old, year work of uh, spiritual growth and healing and transformation. And we uh, put it, uh, I think, pretty concisely in this book and also going into mindfulness and meditation and different ways to heal with the soul and different ways to connect mm -hmm. with the soul, one of which we did today, the soul centering. So that's, a, I think, a wonderful resource coming up and we'll let you know and, it's, and definitely be a part of this show in our newsletter at, at, at the getting through dot uh, org uh, slash holistic our, our website there's a lot of free signups and you'll be notified getting through thru.org slash holistic and and so you'll be aware of newsletter and just get a lot of things you may be interested in but i think you'll enjoy the book if you like this show mm -hmm. and you can also learn more about the circle itself at circle of love and light dot org and that's another place where you can you can actually uh become a member and when you do that you'll right. have access to a resource page where there are a lot of uh free things for you there too we have a whole book on love and happiness that has a lot of really practical tips that's i'm a pragmatist and i as i mentioned i always wanted to grow as quickly and easily as possible and so i provide a lot of tips to people so those there are tips in there and and a lot of information uh like the information that we shared today and more um, and other gifts from our other uh, co-hosts and just many things there. Um, and I also want to finally, uh, to everyone who's listening to express our greatest gratitude for being here and adding love and light to this gathering and to the world. Um, if you enjoy this circle, you also can help us to get the word, the word, the world, I always say the world, <laughs> to get the word out <laughs> to the world. Um, and here are a couple things you can do. The first thing is if you're on Facebook, you can share this video with your friends. 
and that will yeah, really get do. you know that'll get some things out you can also invite your friends personally to join you and to come every week uh, we figure the more the merrier and as as i mentioned we're looking for more and more love and light <laughs> every day and i hope that you can join us next week when we go further into the possibilities that emerge as we open individually and collectively to more love and light and with that i want to wish you a wonderful week Bye, everyone. Great being with you. Bye-bye.